Good morning, my darlings. No, you have not accidentally clicked on a Vlogmas video. This is the 8th of March and it's snowing. <laughs> Fairly heavily, actually. Not settling too much, but I'm so glad I did not plant my seeds outside yesterday like I was almost tempted to do. Good old British springtime. <laughs> proper good morning to you, my darlings. The old Josie is back, the hair is in heatless curls. My dark green robe means that I am fake tanning today, trying to quite literally get my glow back after the incidents of the last couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, was not expecting a full flurry of snow this morning. It's not settling at all, in fact, it's less settled now than it was when I showed you first thing. It's just kind of wet and miserable outside. So I thought I would have a bit of a pamper morning this morning. I have had, you know, the pampering shower where you exfoliate, hair mask. I've put tanning drops on my face. I have, can't really tell, um, but I have put some fake tan on my body and I will probably put another layer on um, a little bit later. I thought I would show you again very quickly um, the like healthy bits that I do each morning as I'm trying to get back into the routine. As I mentioned, I am in the last video, I'm back to enjoying my oat milk cappuccino again in the mornings. I do think that Oatly Barista bloats me, but um, I just love the taste of it so much. And hopefully, literally any day now, my machine that enables you to make your own nut milks at home should be arriving so that will be great but um okay so first thing in the morning let me just get my little cup first first thing in the morning i have been taking my naked biotics this is actually a different one to the one that i shared with you previously um that i picked up from dalesford this is the restore one i can't remember what the other one is called but i think that one is when you're like you know, you're ticking along <laughs> quite healthily and you just need a little boost every day to help the good bacteria in your gut. Well, I thought that the Restore one would be quite good um, considering I've now just finished my course of antibiotics um, and we just need to get everything back <laughs> to working in full functioning order. I have described this to friends as being kind of like a more natural version of Simprove. It says, Naked Biotics contains specially brewed live fermented bacteria. Each bottle contains 12 strains and multiple classes of live bacteria fermented using our naked body temperature process. Uh, so this one in particular is formulated for sensitive tummies that need a bit more TLC, includes rosehip and peppermint to help restore the normal function of your gut. So if you're kind of starting from scratch, I think this would be a really good one. You do not shake it and you do not keep it in the fridge because you don't want to kill that live bacteria. So I do a little splash into an espresso cup and it's really not a bad taste at all. I've actually personally never taken Simprove, um, but I have seen people taking it and pulling funny faces afterwards. And it doesn't actually say if you need to take this before anything else in the mornings. I've not eaten anything yet today, but I have had my coffee. Normally, to be honest, I would take this first, actually while the coffee machine is heating up. And during that time, it's when I remember <laughs> to take things like this. So you may have spotted in the little clip that I, oh, there's none left in here. I have got another, um, another box in backup. Every day, without fail, I take my daily essentials for women from Wild Nutrition. I have these on a subscription. I believe I have a discount code for the subscription, um, which I'll leave on the screen and down below. <laughs> Ooh, oh no, there's two left. Um, very, very handy, easy to remember, perfect for when you're traveling because you just get everything that you need 
in the little sachets. This again has been fantastic for me while I have been not feeling too good. My daily essentials contain the daily multinutrient, the omega-3 and the vitamin D which is just the perfect combination for me personally and a few people have said oh Josie are you still taking your vitamins after learning everything that you read in Spoonfed because Tim Spector, <laughs> yeah so back to talking about him, he has mixed opinions on um, supplements. The main takeaway that I got from the book is that it's really important that they are high quality and the fact that wild nutrition are food grown supplements um, means that our body is able to absorb and get the goodness out of them far more than like your typical vitamin which you can get from you know the the mass brands it's mostly full of filler ingredients which is not good for your body because your body doesn't know what to do with those ingredients um but yeah that is what i take every single day i have also added into my mix the multi-strain biotic again we are on the mission of <laughs> getting my gut back to being in full health. So this is a biotic, prebiotic, probiotic, and fantastic, again, as part of my entire routine of getting everything, sounds like I've only got one left, <laughs> everything back to full function functioning order. There is another product that I take every morning from Wild Nutrition as well, but I'm gonna to talk to you more about that when I'm not looking like this because it is a very important topic. And then the final um, item, which I'm going to consume this morning as part of my kind of healthy-ish morning routine. It's not a perfectly healthy morning routine, this is just what I'm currently doing to get back, hopefully, to being a little bit healthier. Feeling a bit lazy, sometimes I will use um, fresh or frozen berries and I'll put it together like the individual ingredients, but we did have an all plants delivery last week, actually yesterday. Um, so I'm using my almond and berry all plants smoothie pack. I don't think this contains banana, so I might add a banana in. Yeah, it doesn't, and I do like banana in my morning smoothie. I always add my Wild Nutrition Vegan Protein Superfood Blend into my morning smoothies. This is just a fantastic way, again, of getting so much goodness into your breakfast in the easiest way possible. A daily vegan protein formula laid with super greens and adaptogenic mushrooms to power the body and mind. And oh my goodness, this is so noticeable at um, keeping me feeling full for longer. So I'll always put a very steeped <laughs> tablespoon of this in my morning smoothie. Um, if I make the ingredients up, myself as opposed to using the all plants sachet then i'll actually normally add water to emulsify the smoothie but sometimes i find the all plants ones need a little bit more of a creamy consistency adding so i'm going to use the plenish almond milk they actually very kindly sent us this which is really lovely and i've seen a lot of people talking on instagram about how plenish is much better for you than the other um nut milk brands because the ingredients that they use well, there's a lot less of them, which is always a very good sign. The ingredients here are literally spring water, organic almonds, and sea salt, which is fantastic. So I'm going to be adding this to my smoothie, along with the banana, my wild nutrition powder, and that will keep me going for this morning. I forgot another ingredient that I'll always add to my morning smoothies now, and that is my kefir. Again, a fantastic probiotic. <laughs> I still get confused between pro and pre, um, but yeah, fantastic good bacteria. So the more the merrier, I feel, of good bacteria. Sometimes Charlie will mix um, this and some normal yogurt, and I think organic full fat milk with his steel cut oats, and he puts that with yogurt and berries and nuts and stuff in the morning. Um, so sometimes when he has made a concoction of that, I'll put a dollop of that in as well. But I decided not to do a banana actually because I think this is gonna be fairly filling. So that is today's morning smoothie. It was 
actually just watching Liz Earl making her golden morning smoothie. I've been really enjoying watching her videos lately. I think I want to pick up her well-being magazine. Um, just sounds very wholesome and lovely. And she seems to be talking about a lot of the topics that I'm interested in. Um, she was recommending if you only want to use half a banana in your smoothie, then just freeze the other half and then you can put it in the next day's smoothie. And I'd never thought to do that, so great idea. I've just finished with a sprinkling of bee pollen. I just love the taste of bee pollen. It's one of my little obsessions. I actually made a tiny bit too much, so I'm going to slurp a little bit of this now. Top it up, um, and yes, I just love how this tastes. It's so delicious, and it really does keep me full until lunchtime. Hello again, my darlings. Can you even hear me over the Dyson fan? Let's turn that down a bit. My new tactic when it comes to heatless curls is when I'm putting my makeup on, I will let the Dyson fan blast my hair from behind um, in the hope that it will act like a continuous hair dryer. I have just been doing a few emails and I had a couple of work calls, so they've been in for maybe an hour and a half, however, I do fear that the curls um, were pro pro my hair was probably a little bit too wet when I put it in, but we shall see because I don't want to be wearing a silk sausage all day long. So let's see what we've got. That is the fun of heatless curls. That should be a catchphrase on a jumper, shouldn't it? Because I feel like I've said it a million times. Also, I used a conditioning hair mask in the shower this morning, which it's a really nice one. It makes my hair super silky. It's from the Wella Color Save range, but silky hair also does not tend to hold a curl very well. <laughs> Cleopatra. <laughs> Still feels quite damp. Never mind. Nothing lost. Okay, I'm just gonna forget about my hair and let it naturally um, uncurl. So I'm going to do a quick little try on with you, as you might be able to guess from the background here. I've got some new beautiful dresses. Typical, today it's snowing and I want to try on very spring-like floral dresses. Today, the day that I'm filming this, is actually International Women's Day and I received an invitation from Clay de Poe for a gorgeous dinner Tomorrow evening, to celebrate International Women's Day, it's going to be a really, really wonderful dinner. So I'd like to wear something beautiful. Um, I've got a few new dresses here from Ted Baker, a few also from Netta Porter, and hopefully one of those dresses I will wear tomorrow. So I'm gonna do a little quick try on with you. Um, I'm also packing, you can just see it underneath my dresses, I'm also packing a case together to take with me to London because I'm going to stay in London after the dinner tomorrow and then on Friday I am spending the majority of the day in the hairdresser's chair at Michael Van Clark. Um, we're just getting a little bit dark up at the top there and I feel that a spring injection of blonde will do me very well. I feel like I look quite ooh, puffy this morning. I still feel a little bit congested so I apologize for the puffiness, but anyway, um, yes, I'm probably gonna take, I'm gonna pack this jumper with me. I think it's quite fun. Just a really nice, easy to wear knit, Lueve. Um, <clears throat> also from Netta Porter. And yeah, I just want to be super comfy on Friday because I will be probably in the hairdresser for about four hours at least. So a comfy outfit is required. So this is what I'm going to pack um, for Friday. Funorama. Okay, let's do some try on. Okay, so I just made the rookie error of brushing through the curls and I think this side where it was still just too damp, probably the level of dampness that it's ideal if you sleep in your heatless curl set, um, that probably would have worked but yeah we've just got a few straight bits but it's fine, I'm only working from home today. I just wanted nice hair. <laughs> this try on basically. Okay, so dress number one. This is one from Ted Baker and this is a real Josie spring dress. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the one for tomorrow because it's actually too long for me. Um, I need to take up at least an inch from the bottom, but 
I think based on the fabric and the fact that it's quite simple, it's literally a super simple um, seam on the bottom. It'll be really easy to take up, no problem there. This would be a really gorgeous spring or summer wedding guest outfit. Um, absolutely perfect for that. I know it's got a white base, but it's clearly covered in a floral pattern. So personally, I think it's a perfect wedding dress. Really beautiful detail. I always love this detail where you've got a little bit of scallop on the hem. You've got that scallop running through on the seams um, of the dress and also on the neckline. Little bow to cinch you in at the waist. It's just really, really pretty um, maxi length dress. I'm not wearing any heels, so I'm just on tiptoes, but you can see it is a completely full length dress. Really nice that you can cinch it in around the waist. So yeah, I'm gonna tailor this, shorten it a little bit, but it is a beautiful dress. So here we have another dress from the same collection. You can tell it's a very similar floral print. No cinching in around the waist this time, but you still have a lovely bow detail because there is a bow to tie you up at the back there. I would personally say that this is less appropriate as a wedding guest dress than the previous one. Every bride is different, and of course it's important that you get the wedding dress code, but for me personally on my wedding day we are asking our, well I'm kind of saying lightheartedly to friends and family that I'd rather you wore white than wore black. I don't really want dark colours. Let me know what you think of that. Um, if you are a bride-to-be or have recently been a bride, did you give your guests a dress code? Would you dream of saying to your guests that they couldn't wear black, including the men? Um, yeah, personally I just think for a spring or summer wedding, go bright, go light, fresh colours. This, however, would be a really nice transitional dress, in my opinion, um, going into autumn, an autumn wedding, or, do you know what, it is a really beautiful dress. Um, I would wear this to a lovely dinner. This is actually a real good potential for tomorrow night. Hmm, really good potential for that. It finishes, so it is shorter in length, than the previous one, which means I don't need to alter it. It's really beautifully cut as well on the bodice. Oh, these curls have just not turned out very well. Such a shame. Um, but yeah, really beautiful dress. I don't think it's a wedding guest appropriate dress, but it is definitely in the running for tomorrow night. Okay, just momentarily moving away from Ted Baker because I want to try on all the potential, real potential dresses for tomorrow night all together so that I can compare them more easily. But going back to wedding guest chat, don't know why the conversation has evolved to that, but there we go. If someone wore this to my wedding, I would have to tell them that they had just absolutely understood the brief to perfection. I would be thrilled if someone wore something like this to our wedding. It is absolute perfection as a wedding guest outfit in my opinion. However, I did order this on Netta Porter a few weeks ago, before I was ill, so I don't know if it's still available, um, because this designer does not do a lot of each dress. However, I'm in love with this. It's so me. It's got a beautifully fitted bodice here. This rather incredible um, neckline. It's actually elasticated so you do still have some movement, it's definitely not going anywhere. And the pattern is of course this ginormous hydrangea print. Hydrangeas being one of my favourite blooms. I think this colour is a little bit unusual, unlike I think anything in my wardrobe. Just having a feel around if there's pockets. I don't think there are, which is a shame because it would be quite nice to pose with your hands in your pockets. You could put on a really sweet little belt with this. Um, Lengthwise, I'm on my tiptoes at the moment. So let's try with some heels. Mm, maybe too much pattern. Some people are so bored of these shoes, the Valentino Rock Studs. 
but I just go back to them time and time and time and time again because they're so comfortable, they are so secure on your feet. For a wedding, again, perfect, aside from if you're gonna be all day on the grass because of a thin heel, but I would just get those little stumpy bits to add onto the bottom of them. And this color, I think they've got something similar on Netta Porter at the moment. In fact, I was browsing earlier um, and they have got a pair of shoes from Aquazura, I'll pop them on the screen here, which are similar raffia style. I'm very tempted by them, but I don't need them because I have got these and some open toe shoes from Aquazura. But I'm going to try these on for height with this dress as a potential combination for tomorrow evening. Okay, trying the shoes on with the dress have sealed the deal for me. This is absolute perfection. The, I'm not sure, I can't see the screen because you're so far away, but um, hopefully you can see that you can just just see the shoes poking out the bottom and I think these Valentino Rock Studs are just absolutely beautiful shoes and I love to see a little glimpse of them and the length of the dress you can just see the toe and a little bit of the rock stud detail which in my opinion is just perfection. I love the natural, um, hopefully you can see, I love the natural raffia with the florals. I think it just works absolutely perfectly. The raffia somehow makes the outfit feel a little bit more casual. So I would, um, maybe not tomorrow, because tomorrow's actually pretty slightly smarter as it's a dinner. But for a garden party, as a wedding guest, I would probably stick to my usual favorite raffia accessories like the Valentino straw bag. What a fantastic investment this was. I've got so much use out of this. But I think I need something a bit smarter for tomorrow. Let's see. Is that too much floral pattern? I feel like it is. Hmm. Wow, I'm quite a bit taller than when I last had the camera at this angle. Um, I think I think this is it for tomorrow. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I feel very comfortable in this. It reminds me in its style and appropriateness of the Borgo de Nord dress, um, which I photographed at Cornwall. It reminds me kind of in its fabulousness <laughs> of this dress here, which is another absolute favorite. Um, and I just feel that I will get a lot of use out of this this summer. So it's a real treat. But um, yes, I think I have decided that this is what I'll wear tomorrow. I'm gonna go and make myself some lunch now because I'm starting to get a little bit peckish. And then we'll do some more trying on after lunch because there are a few more dresses, something slightly more casual. Um, yeah, just some more really gorgeous pieces, which again could be great for wedding guests, but you might be able to tell from my energy levels, I need some lunch. Okay, darling, so we're back in the kitchen, <laughs> back where today's vlog started. I'm sorry if you can hear the kettle, it's very loud <laughs> when it's when it's boiling. Um, the snow has really picked up again, it is big snowflakes coming down quite heavily, but the ground is wet so it's not sticking. But I am going to make the ultimate snow day lunch, I'm going to make a really lovely homemade soup and the soup that I'm going to be making is actually a recipe from this book here which is a book all about endometriosis and it was actually written by Henrietta Norton who is the founder of my favourites Wild Nutrition. So going back a step, um, talking about Wild Nutrition, it is a obviously female founded brand with a real focus on women's health, fertility and nutrition. There are men's products as well, Charlie takes the daily essentials every day but it is mainly a brand focused on women and um, Henrietta the founder also has endometriosis, has studied it a lot um, and has quite literally written the book on it. One of the products that I take every single day is my Wild Nutrition Endo Complex and for me it's more about managing the um, effects of endometriosis which is all about in managing inflammation mostly. There is a lot more information about endometriosis in this book. Let me read you a little bit from the back which will explain it a lot better than I will. Perfect timing because March is actually endometriosis awareness month um, so it's really great that there's a lot more talk about it because it's something that so many women, myself included, suffer from. 
so many of which actually don't know that they suffer from it, they just get, you know, swashed away as saying, oh, it's just period pain or it's just this. It's a problem that I can't help but feel if it was a, a men male problem, there would be so much more research into it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's the way of the world. So, with as many as 10% of women suffering from endometriosis, it's likely you or someone you know has been affected by the condition. As a suffer sufferer of endometriosis and a qualified nutritional therapist, Henrietta Norton provides a personal and professional look at how women can take practical steps to control their endometriosis and relieve their symptoms through diet and lifestyle changes. As you might be able to see, I have folded down a lot of pages in this book. There are so many fascinating snippets in here, ranging from more information about what endometriosis actually is, to lifestyle changes which are very manageable, are very achievable for helping the symptoms of endometriosis. So a few that I have uh, folded the page down for, excuse me bunny, do you want to come outside? Come on then. <laughs> Sorry, just letting my baby out. Um, yeah, really interesting and I'd, do you know what, this is another thing about endometriosis, not enough people talk about it. Again, with it being a female problem, I feel like that's partially to blame. But um, if you have it or you know someone who does, you're looking to find out more about the disease and also um, things you can do to control it then. Could not recommend this any more highly. So many interesting nuggets of information and really achievable lifestyle shifts that you can make to help manage the symptoms. A lot of the pages that I folded down, um, okay, for example, this one here, it's about investing in a water filter. One of the main topics I picked up from this book is about how it's really important to reduce as many toxins from your life, whether that's external environmental aggressors, um, putting loads of chemicals on your skin or in your body, i.e. linking in really well with wild nutrition. You don't want to be taking supplements that are full of chemical rubbish. <laughs> that's why the food grown element of wild nutrition is so important. But also, what you eat Again, ties in really well with all the gut health stuff that I've been learning a lot more about recently. Cutting out as many chemicals from your, or nasty chemicals I should say, because most things are technically a chemical. But even in your water, making sure that the, you can get as much mineral goodness from your water as possible. So she talks about a, um, sorry this dicky. <laughs> sorry, this is probably the most patchy chat ever, trying to look after my fluffy children. Yes, talking about ensuring that even the water that you drink is um, good for your body and not going to be causing any additional inflation, um, inflammation rather, in your body. I have folded down the pages where she's talking about lots of fantastic recipes. What else? <laughs> yeah, there's a section here on remove as many chemicals and pesticides as you can from your diet. Choosing organic fruit, vegetables and meat is vital. I just feel like everything in this book and maybe a lot of the things that I've been doing since last December alongside taking the endo complex from Wild Nutrition. I feel like my personal symptoms have improved remarkably and since reading this book I've been like, ah, maybe that's why I've been eating a lot more organic, cutting out a lot of the man-made nasty chemicals in ultra-processed food. Um, I have, there was also a section that I folded the corner down about sugar and uh, how that can be not so good for inflammation in the body, which is endometriosis is obviously um, an inflamed cells that are growing outside the womb when they shouldn't do. So anything that we can do to minimize inflammation is great. There's a list here, a shopping list for your cupboard, lots of foods which are going to be very beneficial for you. It's just a fantastic book. And if you think that you have got endometriosis, maybe you've not been diagnosed yet because yes, it is very hard to get diagnosis. I think it's like an average, the average woman, it takes them seven years to get diagnosed because doctors just, yeah, there's been a lot of eye rolling in this conversation because it's really just not taken as seriously as it should do. But whether you think that you might have it or you know you've got it and you would like some advice on managing the symptoms, Wild Nutrition actually offer a free 30 minute consultation on the phone with an endometriosis specialist. I'll leave a link direct to that down below. It's not a sales pitch. It's a very informative and interesting chat. And I would highly recommend this book as well. It's taught me a lot. There's been a lot of aha, that makes sense moments while reading this. 
The recipes in here are fantastic. I've also folded down a new energy ball recipe that I'm gonna try out probably at the weekend. Maca and cacao energy balls. So many very achievable lifestyle tweaks that you can make which will be really beneficial for managing your endometriosis. So today, cream of broccoli and cashew soup. This is what I am going to make for my lunch. I've got the ingredients out. The kettle, as you can hear, is almost finished boiling. I've been filming for eight minutes and it's still not boiled. So let's get cracking. Okay, so here are my ingredients. I have got a load of purple sprouting broccoli. If I was going to the shops, I probably would have got the regular broccoli, um, but this is what we've got in the fridge. And I thought I would throw in some kalettes just for good measure. Both are, of course, organic. And then we have got uh, garlic, ginger, cashews, and a selection of lovely flavoursome spices, cardamom, um, clove, nutmeg, and... Oh, I've got two sets of cardamom. Okay, I'm pro oh, cinnamon ground cinnamon so this is going to all be combined with some water and cooked in my saucepan and then we're going to blend it up i think it, that's literally it add the broccoli and boil for two minutes until tender whiz in a blender add olive oil vinegar and process again yes you do also add apple cider vinegar which i believe i have got in here some organic apple cider vinegar yes fantastic I'm not going to be able to fit my face and what I'm doing in the screen, but step one is to prepare the ingredients. So I need one clove of garlic. Okay, that's one clove of garlic chopped up going into the pan. Next, I'm going to add in some ginger. I use a microplane to grate my ginger and I do not want to grate my hands. So I use this mesh glove when using, oh, put it on the wrong hand. Um, so I use this mesh glove when using the microplane to save any accidents. I'd say that's about 10 grams. Okay, next is 50 grams of cashew nuts. I'm just gonna weigh these out on the Thermomix. Turns out 50 grams of cashews is not as much as I thought, so good job I measured that. I would normally go outside to get a sprig of rosemary, but seeing as it's snowing, I'm just gonna take some from this piece we've got in the kitchen. Does it say to put the entire sprig in? It does. However, I am going to just take the um, leaves off it and not put the stalk in. <laughs> Maybe the stalk is full of goodness, but I don't normally cook with it, so there we go. Half a tisp of ground cardamom. Mine is not yet ground, but this entire soup is going to get blended, so I'm just going to put a couple of cardamom pods in there. Half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Again, my nutmeg is whole, but I will very carefully use the microplane again. I actually don't trust myself without the glove. <laughs> lovely okay other spices we're putting in some cloves it's gonna have such a nice warming flavor to it this soup and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon yummy whoa <laughs> that's a little bit too much i think there's a bit of a typo in here because it says to add in the vanilla but there's no vanilla in the list of the ingredients and i don't feel that vanilla would be quite right in here i think it means olive oil. Oh no, mentions that later. Okay, I'm just going to add salt and pepper, two pints of water, and then bring it to the boil again on the hob. Pepper. And two pints of water. Mm. 
Now while that boils up, I'm going to prepare my broccoli. Stalks, leaves and everything are going to go in. I'm just picking out any leaves which look a little bit sad. Okay, and this is going into my soup. And I've got some kale that's going spare in the fridge, so I'm just gonna stick some of this in as well, because why not? Okay, it is time to blend this all together into a smooth and creamy soup. blended, adding a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and two tablespoons of olive oil. And we blend again. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh my gosh. Yummy. Still definitely warm enough um, from the thermal mix, so I'm just going to pull this straight in the bowl. Look at that! Oh, it smells so delicious. It's always nice to finish with a little splash of olive oil and some more pepper. And some thick cut crunchy bread. Mm, delicious. Okay, I am going to tuck into this. I shall report back. It smells amazing and there's plenty left for me to enjoy the weekend as well. So I'll pop what's left in a jar once it's cooled down. Okay, I'm going to enjoy my lunch and then we'll do a little bit more of our try-on session. Okay, I have ended up with one side of my hair completely straight and one side almost perfectly curled after brushing it out a few times. Never mind. Um, so the broccoli soup was absolutely delicious. The portion that I made was enough for like two more lunches. So I've actually put what's left in a little stasher bag and I've put it in the freezer because where I'm in London tomorrow and the next day, I don't feel like it would be fresh enough if I just put it in the fridge so it's now frozen, ready for when I want a nice hearty, um, hearty lunch. And as you'll have just seen, I did also have a slice of the carrot and Cotswold walnut cake from Barefoot. That was our final wedding cake tester. We always knew that that probably wasn't going to be our wedding cake, I just feel that coffee and walnut is not particularly wedding-y cake. We are most tempted by the rose, rhubarb and raspberry and I think that would be a really perfect wedding cake. My second choice would have been the carrot, clementine or clementine and bergamot but they've all been absolutely delicious. Funnily, the, um, well maybe not funnily, the endometriosis book by Henrietta Norton does say <laughs> that reducing sugar really does help with the effects of endometriosis so she doesn't recommend having too much cake but life is for these lovely little moments um anyway okay so i've come upstairs just put on some new lipstick my usual elizabeth arden notably nude <coughs> excuse me and now let's carry on trying these beautiful dresses Okay, we are back into trying on mode. Hopefully the lighting is not too bad. It is so grey and snowy outside. By the way, if you keep hearing my voice going up and then there being a weird cut in the editing, it's because I keep having coughing. <laughs> Splutters. 
anyway um yes the snow is still coming down hard anyway this is the next dress this is another one from Netta Porter it's from a brand called Vince and I've definitely got a few Vince dresses in my collection they're really lovely very good quality um I would say very timeless designs this one I would say you could wear this as a wedding guest in fact quite a nice one if you've got any weddings in the very foreseeable future because it's a little bit more transitional i would say from winter to spring um or even cold spring <laughs> to warm spring i feel like you cannot call the weather that we've got now spring because it's snowing um but then equally isn't june still technically spring and that is you know strappy tops and it's hot outside you're probably catching a tan when you're out gardening so spring encompasses a lot but if you are going to a chilly spring wedding then this would be really lovely it's absolutely gorgeous actually you've got pleated i think it's silk uh, material with this really gorgeous kind of tropical floral pattern on it i think it's just the sheen which makes me think it's tropical it's actually not that tropical i don't know what kind of fur it is it's a little bit peony-esque but you'd never see a blue peony so that's what's confusing me a little bit i would potentially add my own belt maybe a brown leather belt which could make it a little bit more casual um it's just got its own ribbon but it's very thin and i feel like a little bit more accentuation around the waist would look really pretty you've got lots of pleats going on up here and then the pleats finish on the skirt the way that the fabric it's almost like it's become ironed <laughs> from there so it gets uh you can see more of the pattern and mm. it's really really pretty lengthwise lengthwise it is ankle length so i would say like mid axi really beautiful and then you've got this kind of shirt style collar detail and you can see the beautiful pleat structure here i don't have many things in my wardrobe that are this color but something that i do love about this dress is i could wear this into London for important meeting days. It does, I, I wish it was, where this is blue, I wish it was green. That would just be absolutely perfect, but it is a really stunning dress and smart long sleeve dresses. I do find that I look for and reach for in my wardrobe a lot for those London meeting days. So yes, not appropriate for tomorrow evening, but maybe tomorrow daytime, so I do have some meetings in the day, which I need to be fairly smart for. Hmm, and I could probably <laughs> fit a thermal on underneath this as well, which is always a big gold tick from me. This has, without meaning to, just become a wedding guest outfit options segment of the video, but um, hopefully you find that useful. So the next brand that I've got three outfits from is LK Bennett. Such a lovely brand, they always have the most gorgeous pieces for not just as a wedding guest, but going to the races, obviously we're approaching that. Cheltenham Races is literally next week, I think. Yeah, it's very, very soon. Um, and boat races, horse races, lots of fabulous events start to appear in the diary in spring. So a lot of these outfits are perfect for all of those as well as weddings. This, I would say, is a fantastic outfit for wearing <laughs> to a spring summer wedding, also to the races, also to a garden party. I can't wait for summer garden parties. They seem so far away, especially given the weather today, but um, it won't be too long, hopefully. I feel like May, you can get some real scorchers in May. In fact, you can get scorchers in April sometimes, can't you? The first lockdown, if we cast our minds back to that. We had some, I, I remember even when we still lived in Clapham, but during the lockdowns, that would have been very early April 2020, it was so warm that we were like doing workouts outside in the garden wearing just shorts and a sports bra. So yeah, hot weather could be, could be imminent. Much to the um, unlikeliness given the weather today. Anyway, so this dress does not come with any kind of belt unless I've dropped it at some point. So I've just added my little Loewe leather waist belt. These are so practical. I think I saw something similar on Netta Porter, so I'll leave a link down below, the most similar that I can find to this, if this is out of stock. And it just, I feel that it really needed this on this dress. To make it more casual, you could do a raffia belt, which I absolutely love. Gorgeous floral pattern, it's like a very, orangey red rose, uh, beautiful sheer chiffony material. 
really gorgeous material. You've got fluted sleeves. And then I can kind of imagine Kate Middleton wearing this. In fact, I'm sure she probably will on one of her occasions. It's absolutely gorgeous, really elegant, love that it's long sleeve. The place that I'm going at the end of the month is a country where you do have to dress more modestly. So this will be really good for that, I think. I don't know if that would be too sheer. Mm, not sure, I have to double check. But yes, a really gorgeous dress if you're looking for something. And I would say also, this is a very ageless dress. I can imagine my mum wearing this. I can imagine ladies of all ages wearing a dress like this. I think LK Bennett is fantastic for that. So yeah, another great success. Okay, here we've got another absolutely gorgeous dress from LK Bennett. And you know when you try on a dress and you just know that you're gonna get so much wear out of it. This is gonna be one of those dresses that you see me wearing a lot on repeat over spring and summer this year. To accessorize it, first of all, my lovely, do you remember these from last year? My lovely green Aquazura raffia heels. Let's pop those on. And then again, LK Bennett, why are you not putting belts with your dresses? I feel like this one and the last one both require a belt, but neither of them have come with one that I'm aware of. I may stand corrected if I have accidentally dropped one. However, you, to make this a bit smarter, could add the same kind of leather belts I showed you before, but I am going to casualify it because this is the kind of dress that I like to wear all day, every day, during the spring and summer at home, when I'm running my errands. I find dresses like this so comfortable, really wearable, and also they wash well because this is actually, I think it's just cotton, so this will wash really well. It will need ironing every time it gets washed, but that's fine. Yeah, I think it just needed that little cinch in. If I was to be on the LK Bennett product team, I would have made the actual dress a little bit thicker so that you didn't need a slip underneath because I don't love it when you can see the slip on the inside. I'd rather the dress itself was just a tiny bit thicker, but I'm sure there's a reason why they have done that. I think it's no surprise why I'm in love with this dress. It's white and green. It's just very elegant, very easy to wear. Lovely length of sleeve if you're flower arranging or cooking or whatever you're doing, your sleeves don't get in the way. And then down at the bottom, you've got this lovely flare detail. Looks great with these shoes. Lovely A-line, a little bit of a ruffle flare detail down there at the bottom. It's just so pretty. It's most similar that I have seen to my gorgeous green Erdem dress, which was a very expensive purchase, but something that I've never one moment regretted. Um, I'll pop a picture of it. Well, actually I've got it here. I can't wait to wear this again. This is probably my favorite dress in my collection. Also looks fantastic with the waist belt. It's got fluted sleeves, um, but otherwise it's not like madly dissimilar to this. Um, I think it's probably the pattern and the fabric that I love about this. So yeah, I'm really glad that there is a more affordable alternative and I just know that this is the kind of dress that I will wear a lot this year. So LK Bennett, another absolute winner. Okay, we are into the final outfit, which is by far the most spring-like outfit in the entire collection of outfits. However, just before we move on, I forgot to show you that there is a, can you see? A scalloped detail at the bottom of this dress. And I am just a huge sucker for a scallop detail. I kind of wish there was more scallop detail. Like the scallop detail, is the word scallop starting to sound a bit weird to you? <laughs> the scallop detail on the Ted Baker dresses, um, like on the edge of the sleeves, that on the end of these sleeves and on this neckline would have made this possibly the best dress in the entire world, as well as the slightly thicker fabric. So if I was to be an LK Bennett designer, that's what I personally would have done, but it's still a beautiful dress. Okay, so the last outfit we have is actually a co-ord. It is a top and a skirt which match absolutely beautifully. I'm not sure how I feel about um, a crop top for a wedding guest. Again, to be honest, if someone wore this to my wedding, I would think that it was an absolutely gorgeous outfit and I'd be very happy for them to wear this. But some brides may think it's a bit casual. But you know what? People need to stop being so sensitive, don't they? <laughs> if someone turns up to a wedding wearing this and you're not a fan of crop tops, just get over it. <laughs> there are more important things to worry about. So I think this is really pretty. I will definitely wear, I don't know if I'd wear the top 
separately, like with something else. But I would definitely wear the skirt, perhaps um, at the moment while it's still a little bit cooler. I would potentially wear this skirt, even with a roll neck. I think that would be a really gorgeous transitional outfit. The skirt fits so beautifully. Sorry, I keep adjusting you. Um, so that you can hopefully see. Yeah, the skirt fits really beautifully. It's very fitted on the waist. I really like where it finishes. It's got beautiful big pleat there in the middle, big pleats on the side. It's just very well tailored. LK Bennett do tailored pieces very exceptionally well. I think the top is a little bit more hit and miss with this padded bra on. The boob section fits me well. It has got an elasticated se section on the back there which is very clever because one size does not fit all when it comes to so many measurements here. You've got the rib measurement, you've got the bust measurements, and you've got the like nipple to shoulder measurement. A lot of things need to be perfect here in order for this top to fit you well. As you can see, I've got a bit of gaping, so I could probably do a shortening the straps by just one centimeter. See on this side, I'm just clutching it here and just shortening the straps by one centimeter would make this fit me even better, but the skirt fits absolutely beautifully. Love this combo, <laughs> can't wait for warmer days so that I can actually wear it. Again with the Aquazura shoes, don't know where I've put them, who knows? With the Aquazura shoes, a raffia bag, just a gorgeous spring summer outfit. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's still snowing. What else was I doing recently? Showing you something else that was really seasonally inappropriate. Can't remember. But yes, I hope you enjoyed that little try on. I'm gonna pack the uh, hydrangea dress and accessories in my little suitcase ready for tomorrow. My energy levels today are not good. I need to remember I'm still <laughs> recovering from the flu, so not to um, overdo it too much. I know it doesn't seem like trying on dresses is overdoing it, but you just know your own energy levels. Uh, so I'm gonna pack my suitcase and then I think I'm just gonna sit down and chill <laughs> for an hour or so and by chill I mean edit some videos and catch up on emails. So yes. Oh, that's the Aquazero shoes. <laughs> Didn't lose them, I'll put them away. I think they'll look really great with this outfit and while I'm getting changed in between takes of showing you the outfits I'm watching CNBC Make It, this YouTube channel and I'm currently watching a video on the rise of the Shake Shack empire. <laughs> Yum, love it. Okay, I'm gonna get packing. Angry with me, and he, he said- That's the founder of Shake Shack. The view from our office window. Snow is starting to settle again, but it's been like, this is actually the lightest it's been snowing all day. It's been bigger bigger snowflakes, but I guess the ground is getting cooler now. So it's starting to stick. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. I don't mind this weather in December. It feels festive, but I want to start wearing spring dresses <laughs> and seeing my, oh no, my lupins. I hope my lupins survive. Why do some of the tiles, like that one, not get any snow on them and then the one next to it is covered in snow. It's the same stone. Oh, one of life's little mysteries. What an inviting view. A puppy dog. And the fire is lit. Perfect for a snowy afternoon. Are you going to join me for a little bit more editing, boys? Come on then. Let's do a little bit more editing. Okay, we're up in the bathroom again and I look like a smurf because it's so cold and white and blue outside with the colour of the snow. Um, but I'm gonna take my makeup off. I feel like I look like a grandma in my, my little cardigan and my hair all pulled back now. I've just been watching a YouTube video while I'm prepping some veg for tonight's dinner on how Singapore Airlines make their airplane food. And my, my recommended page is quite hilarious. But I just love watching things and multitasking. I was having this chat with someone earlier today. It's, I just like, I like having some, I like learning something while I'm doing something. So if I'm like chopping vegetables or trying on clothes, I will stick on a YouTube video in between and learn how I'll see if airlines make their food. It's actually a lot fresher than I thought it would be. Normally, to be honest, I will, um, watch other YouTubers because 
that's far more exciting. But when I'm exhausted, when I've watched my favourites, then the random recommended page really starts to come into its own. But anyway, having just done some editing, um, this vlog is already very long, so there's no way that I should include tomorrow in this vlog too, because otherwise it'll just be too long, and tomorrow's gonna be really fun, so I don't want that to get, like, squished into the end of this vlog. So, we've done a vlog in a day, which is a dream, because it means that I actually get ahead of schedule, so <laughs> double bonus. Um, not gonna do my evening skincare routine with you, because you've seen it before, and <laughs> what random thing on my YouTube recommended page? How Juniors bakes five million cheesecakes during a cream cheese shortage. No, I don't want to watch that. That actually sounds really boring. Lentils, a miracle of nutrition. I'm going to watch a documentary about lentils. How thrilling. Do any of my favourite YouTubers have any video that I can watch instead of that? Ooh. <laughs> Tamara, spilling all the tea. Are influencers rude? Hmm, okay, I'm gonna watch that. You got me. You got me with your catchy title. Darlings, I'm gonna end this vlog. Thank you for watching. I will see you on Tuesday for the next one. I hope you had a glorious weekend. Is it Mother's Day? No, that's next week. Thank goodness. <laughs> Phew. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.